Hello and welcome to the Views Club. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make Tres Leches cake. You might have seen one of my other videos that I made the Tres Leches cake and the difference between that video and this one is that in the old video I used uh, cake flour and for this one I'm using all-purpose flour. I'm trying to achieve a texture that you guys requested because the other one's a little bit more firmer and this one's definitely more of a moist traditional way of making your cake. Uh, the reason I have two different versions is because I do have a child that has sensory processing disorder and the other recipe was what helped me get my son to enjoy this cake with the family. So if you guys are interested in learning a few new tips and a different style of making a tres leches cake, please keep watching. Before you do any step for your cake, what you're going to do first is you're going to crack your eggs and you're going to separate them, okay? And this is before you start taking out your flour, before you start preheating your oven. The first thing that you're going to do is separate your eggs so that they're room temperature and they're not too cold when we're handling them for the recipe. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to sift our flour. Our salt and our baking powder I know a lot of recipes are gonna tell you to um, sift your flour and then measure it for me I just get a cup a leveled cup of flour and then I sift it And we're gonna set this flour right here to the side while we get to our next step. What we're doing next is we're gonna go ahead and beat our egg yolks with our sugar and we're gonna beat them until we get a pale uh, yellow color, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Add your egg yolks. And we're only gonna be adding two thirds of a cup of sugar. I saved our one-third cup of sugar so that we can mix this when we do our egg whites. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start at a very low speed and then I'm gonna start switching it up as this blends a little bit better and I know it won't splatter on me. We're looking for a pale yellow consistency, a little bit thicker, and I'll show you guys in just a moment. well for this step is that when you're blending it it's gonna turn pale yellow quickly but on your end you're gonna see that you can see the granules of sugar and you want to make sure that your sugar and your egg yolks are really smooth and well mixed or else this is gonna change the dynamic of your recipe once you've mixed this combination here for about a minute or two that's when you want to go ahead and add your vanilla and your milk The egg yolks with sugar are tend to be very thick. So you want to make sure you have a spatula, something where you can scrape the bottom of the bowl and the sides to make sure that you've gotten all the sugar um, away from the bowl and blended and incorporated into our, our liquid. And 
let's go ahead and mix again. If you chose to skip on the vanilla for this part, your eggs and this portion is going to be very, very pale. But if you added vanilla, it's going to give it a more of a darker hue and you should be okay with that. We're going to continue mixing this on a high for about uh, three to four minutes. Okay, it's been about four minutes for me. We have a smooth consistency, a little bit runny. It's not like runny water. It's not thick like a batter. Just a little smoothness, as you guys can see. Okay, so let me go ahead and clean this up so that we can get to our next step. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna beat our egg whites until we get them to nice, shiny peaks. And I'm gonna walk you guys through this step, okay? So let's go ahead and add our egg whites. And what we're going to do, we're going to be here for a while, even though I have a hand mixer, if you're doing this by hand, you're going to be here for quite some time. So take a break with your arms, relax, calm yourself, because you will be here doing work if you don't have a little electric mixer. So what we're going to do is we're going to beat the egg whites for about a minute and a half. I'm going to start off low, then I'm going to go to medium, and then I'm going to hit it on a high. we're able to start the foam process I mean it would be nice if I said we're only gonna need three more minutes we're gonna be here a while um, one of the things that I want to mention to you guys if you're scared of over mixing your egg whites you can use half a teaspoon of cream of tartar half a teaspoon of lemon juice or even vinegar at this point that prevents from over beating these eggs it's gonna be up to you um, on how you guys want to handle this part for me I'm just gonna go with the sugar and the egg whites so I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the sugar Sprinkle it in. I've been mixing the egg whites for about a minute and already I got enough foam in here. It's foamy. It falls like a ribbon. You guys are gonna think you're done, but you're not. You gotta keep going because we want the shiny peaks. The other thing that I wanna mention is that I got a lot of comments saying that my egg whites were not rising, they're flat, it's not working, what's going on? Make sure that your eggs are room temperature and that's gonna make a huge difference in your recipe. So let's go ahead and keep mixing these up. Make sure to take a break <laughs> even with the hand mixer it gets heavy um, one of the other things you guys are gonna think that at this part because it looks like you know foam nice fluffy little clouds that you're ready you're not ready yet keep going
Okay, at this point, you wanna make sure you clear all around the bowl, just to make sure that we got all the egg whites that are there, or anything that needs a little bit of a mix. Um, so that we make sure we get all of this incorporated. So let's, let's keep on mixing. guys that took me about five minutes to get to this point and what you're gonna see is that you get those nice peaks you don't want to there's a big difference from when you get to the peaks to where you get to the part where it's almost too fluffy and you can't do anything with it but you want to make sure you get to the peaks and don't over mix okay now let's go ahead and start on our next step what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add our flour in three parts to our egg yolk sugar vanilla milky mixture okay and you're just gonna add a little bit at a time. I've been working really hard for you guys on this recipe because the last thing I wanted for anybody to have problems with this recipe because I know it can be temperamental. So I've tried to make it several different ways um, different ways on how it can go wrong and that's why you're going to get more of the details and frequently asked questions at the end of this video you don't want to over mix this part you just want to mix it enough to where everything gets incorporated uh, in the batter so it can be about three to four portions of the flour that you're letting it at a time it's going to depend on your bowl and it's always uh, best to work with a bigger bowl, but you guys know, for some reason I end up picking the smaller bowls and... <laughs> and I'm going around like this and then lifting it up. It's kind of like if I'm folding it in, like I'm going to be folding the egg whites in here. And mixing the flour with my um, batter here, it's working best for me when I use a whisk. I think with the whisk, it helps you with this batter to keep it nice and fluffy and light. So now that I've blended everything well in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my egg whites into this bowl so that I can use this bowl to do the whole blending because I'm gonna need the bigger bowl. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the egg whites gradually into this batter and we're gonna fold it in. So get a good scoop. I usually come in halfway like this and then fold it like that and then I give it another big fold so I'm going half coming around and then folding it all together okay in half coming around and giving it a fold we don't want to ruin this batter by making it flat we want to keep the fluffiness in here, so that's why we're folding it in. Be very patient with this part, because at this part, you're going to be like, I want to be over. Be patient. It's going to be worth it. with the bigger bowl really does make a huge difference. In half, come around, and do a good fold. Half, come around, 
around and give it a good fold. Do you see how fluffy the batter still is? We want to keep that consistency going for our cake. I think one of the important parts for this is that when you're folding, you're very gentle, okay? And then you might get a few of the foamy white parts in here, but it's gonna blend properly. Just don't over fold. I'm gonna be using my glass baking dish. This is my favorite one. I mean, I've had it for a very long time. Uh, you guys can make it on whatever baking dish that you do have. One of the things that I'm going to do differently here is I'm going to line it with parchment paper at the bottom. If you have a nonstick uh, baking pan, it's going to be great for you. And we're not going to grease anything on the sides. You guys mentioned to me that a lot of your guys' cakes were shrinking, that the size reduced drastically. I mean, it's going to happen in baking um, with, for a lot of reasons. But for our sake, we're not going to put any oil, any butter, nothing. We're just gonna let this rise up and do its thing. Let's go ahead and pour this batter in here gently. This glass bowl, this mixing bowl is actually really heavy. <laughs> Start spreading the batter smoothly. I had so many comments on the last recipe uh, for the Tres Leches style that my husband was curious and he actually ended up making it for us and it came out perfect. And I told him, I'm like, I'm not going to give you any of the steps. Whatever's on the video is what you have to do. Okay, so one of the things I like to do is I like to drop it like it's hot so that we can get those air bubbles uh, out of our batter. It's not a lot, but just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and bake this cake at 350 degrees and I'm gonna bake it anywhere from 28 to 35 minutes. I'll let you guys know how long it took on my end. And you wanna put it in the center rack and make sure that there's nothing else uh, inside your oven. So let's go ahead and bake. Okay, I've been here 28 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and poke it in the middle and see if we're ready. If it comes out clean, you're ready. It's gonna be a little bit soft. You see that little sponginess? That's what you want because that's gonna help us absorb all the delicious syrup we're gonna pour on here. So we're ready to take this out. This blend that I have for you for this cake does not shrink on the sides, guys. We didn't put any of the coating like butter, oil, or anything to the sides. And those of you that don't want the sides to shrink, don't make sure not to grease your pan with anything. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let this cool. And we're gonna let it cool for about an hour to an hour and a half. You can let it cool a little bit longer if you want to. And that's when we're gonna come and scrape the sides because if you notice right now, if we go here in the side, it's stuck. And if I do that, I run the risk of ruining this whole cake and smashing it because it's that soft. So we're gonna wait till it all dries up and it cools down so that we can do the side scrape on our cake. Cake has been here setting for about 30 minutes. My pan is still really hot. If you notice when we did that first poke with the fork, there was nothing happening. So you wanna allow it 30 minutes before you can come in here and do the poking that we need so that our syrup absorbs it when we pour it on here, okay? So this is kind of what I do. I just go in 
give it a little bit of space and you're gonna notice that you get some of the of the cake that comes up if that happens you need a paper towel or something you can clean your fork with because if not you're gonna end up having that on the top of your cake and that's what you want to avoid so let me go ahead and show you how to poke this cake if you see with the fork in certain parts it was fine and then this other part it wasn't working too well the other thing you can use is you can use a nice little stick a kebab stick a knife something sharper and just come in and do your points a little bit better and it's going to give you more of a smooth style okay and you might on your end what's happening here is that we might need to let this rest a little bit more before we continue to poke because the parts that are still very warm are holding on to dear life when you poke it so I'm gonna let this rest another 15 uh, to 30 minutes before I continue to poke it again. Okay, now what we have going on here is I have two cups of heavy whipping cream. If you want this whipped cream to come out delicious, get heavy whipping cream. I found a really big tub for about under five dollars at Costco so if you guys are Costco shoppers go for it I'm gonna go ahead and add half a cup of sugar so you can go between one-third or half a cup the sweetness is gonna be up to you now I'm gonna start with the low setting just so it doesn't splash in my face and then I'm gonna move it to a medium and after the medium we're gonna hit it at a high so let's get to it oh yeah who's ready for this oh yeah <laughs> It's just frothy. There's nothing too much going on for a whipped cream yet. That's what we have going on, so we're gonna keep at it. Keep whipping it. Whip it good. is ready it's gonna take you anywhere from six to about eight minutes and look at that that's how you want it you want it nice and solid so that way when we smear it on our cake it doesn't melt it doesn't fall anywhere and it's just exactly where we set it and for all my views club doing this by hand bless your heart really bless your heart let us know how many minutes it took you and if we hear from you next year we'll understand why because your arms are gonna be hurt you're gonna need a vacation after and Tell your loved ones that you need a little, at least one of these little mixers because it is necessary for this cake, guys. Because beating this whipped cream to its form is hard work. Now we're going to go ahead and make our syrup for our delicious cake. And what you're going to use is your evaporated milk. I'm going to be using a whole can today. Um, you can use as much as you want on here for this syrup. If you end up getting too much left over, because somebody said, what are you going to do with the rest of your can? Sometimes with the evaporated milk, I add it to my pasta when I'm cooking. So that's what I use it for. But today I don't have use for it. And then one can of condensed milk. There's a lot that gets stuck at the bottom of the can. Get it out. We need it. <laughs> We're gonna add our vanilla and our milk. It's heavy whipping cream, but I call it milk. Same thing, guys. I have to clarify because I tend to confuse you guys sometimes. I don't mean to, it just happens. Make sure you just stir it all until it's nice and smooth, okay? Ooh, perfect. As I showed you guys in the video, for this particular part of the cake, 
using the fork was causing too many complications. Okay, so if the fork method is not working and it's lifting too much cake, get a nice little skewer and poke throughout your cake. Once you poked your cake, you want to come to the sides and you can either scrape it off because you guys were telling me, why does my cake detach? You're going to see a little bit of it right here. And the thing is that you want it to detach a little bit so that the milk and the syrup that we pour in here absorbs throughout the whole cake. Okay. tell you guys there's a difference in texture from this one to the last cake that I showed you guys how to make and the reason I know is because my older son did not want anything to do with this one not even one bite and before at least with the other one he gets he gets into it okay so just follow through on the sides just so that you can separate the cake okay now since I put uh, parchment paper on the bottom I'm gonna go ahead and flip it onto another another tray and I went the parchment paper route for you guys for those of you that are gonna be serving this for a birthday or a different occasion where you're not gonna be using this tray okay and what you want to do is you want to take this little sheet off beautiful can you see that so for me, since it's not for a birthday occasion today, it's for my family to devour. I'm gonna go ahead and place it back in the pan that I use it in. There you go. And it just forms itself right back. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna begin to pour our syrup over this deliciousness. You'll see that I'm going to start out on the outsides because the center part always absorbs the most um, syrup and I like for all the pieces to get it. Some of you might not like it too soggy, so take it easy on the syrup, but for me, I'm going to pour it all on here, okay? This is going to be epic. I don't know if it's just me, but I get so excited when I make tres leches cake. It took me a long time to be able to achieve a good tres leches cake. And it's just one of those things that you don't understand until you make it when people say how difficult it is to make or even your guys' comments that you've paid somebody a hundred dollars to make you a tres leches cake. That's impressive. That's how special this cake really is. So do you feel that this version of the cake is more difficult to make than the other one? Um, they're both difficult in their own way, but they all serve a particular purpose. For example, the other one I made it from having to try different styles for my son. Because of the time that I made it for your birthday, one time he wasn't interested in his favorite part of birthdays is birthday cakes. And I'm like, you know what? You guys know I'm a goody two shoes mommy. I went for it. And when you guys told me that you weren't achieving it on your end, guess what I did? I've, I've been experimenting here in this kitchen to try to achieve a delicious cake for you guys. That's, I don't want to say foolproof, because you're not fools, you're my friends, but that anybody would be able to achieve. And I think that if you take the time with this one and you have to have a really good mindset, if you're angry that day, don't try to make it. It's going to come through in your cake. So that's, that's what I've been doing guys. If you guys run out of syrup, because this cake is a bit thirstier than the previous one that we made, you can add a little bit of milk, a little bit more heavy cream. It's gonna be whatever you're using, half and half. All of those work. You know I don't like to limit your guys' creativity. So whatever works for you guys, okay? This is gonna absorb everything. So divine. You guys can hear my little dog walking over here. She's excited. Pretty are you excited for Mama's Tres Leches cake? <laughs> she wishes, huh?
You know, I'm very, um, one of the things I'm going to share with you guys is that I'm very particular about um, cakes that I make for my family's birthdays. And let me give you a brief little story of one of them. When my older son was going to turn one, I could not bring myself to understand how I was going to feed a one-year-old that has barely started eating vegetables or baby food that I would make for him, how I was going to feed him a sugar-filled, heavy cake. I, I didn't understand that like all the glue just so many things that his body wasn't ready for so i figured out to make a gentle pie for him and then like the following year i ended up making more of a like a real fruit type of cake that were pretty popular at the time so i really do go out of my way to please people and i hope that you guys are pleased with this cake and i'm ready to put this whipped cream on there so let's go ahead and get to it but yeah i just remember him turning one and there was I mean, you're talking about about eight years ago. There's there wasn't that much a selection for more natural, kinder things for, <laughs> for our system. So yeah, it's 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 been a an adventure. And this is before I knew he had any kind of um, sensory or or that he was on the spectrum, which is mommy's instinct, right? Good lord, this looks delicious. <laughs> I think this uh, option is epic because you're going to want to pour more milk all the way on the top, but this cake absorbs it. And if you add way too much, you're going to end up, it's going to fall apart and you don't want that to happen unless you really like that. And if you made it to this part, I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And if you're having a difficult time with this cake, don't give up. The more you try it, the more you experiment with it and what you're doing because you run across so many obstacles with baking that if your baking powder is expired, it's over. You overbeat your um, your egg whites, it's over. Like it's if you don't take um, uh, your eggs out for room temperature, you know it, there's a lot of complications. The flavor will put pull through, but it's going to be the technique that you give this cake and make it comfortable for your home. I like to spread my whipped cream really, really thick. I appreciate that. I know you do. You're the reason why I learned to make whipped cream, sis. There's always a very like wonderful reward when you make a certain dish. Like, especially like when I make something for my sister, like she's so beyond grateful. Like you made that staff. <laughs> You know and I hope that you guys get the same because there's like you're connecting with your family and they're gonna remember you for making that wonderful dish every family member has that Thea that makes that one particular item or the mom when you guys come together and you can be the one that brings the tres leches but you guys know we're in a club you don't have to tell unless you want to share the recipe and you don't want to explain you just send them over <laughs> right and you just want to smooth out the layer and when you make the whipped cream fresh um, you're real it's very easy to manage very easy I know I told you guys last time I better not find out you use cold whip and you guys are like I use cold whip and I was cracking up because I'm always just kidding with you guys I always tell you there's no right and wrong because you have to make it comfortable with whatever you have you know we'll get into those details about my experimenting later with uh, gingerbread men gingerbread cookies and bread you don't want to know no i think they do no not right now guys <laughs> let's focus on how wonderful this cake has turned out yes <laughs> it looks great i'm so excited yeah i'm so excited i'm so excited yeah <laughs> so now that we've gotten to this wonderful part we have two options and plenty of options the Views Club really surprised me and I get excited as much as Cloud does when we get pictures of the Tres Leches cake. Like, it's really, really meaningful. Um, you guys made it with like the toasted coconut, with a bunch of berries on the top. You made cupcakes. I mean, you guys have seen them in the pictures and I'm, I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so proud of our channel for us coming together and all the comments that you guys have left, just know that they help somebody else when they read them. So please continue to leave your comments. Um, the things that work for you from the recipes that I make because there it might not work out for everybody And if you tried something different, it's gonna help somebody else out. So let's go ahead and plate our Our cake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it first. That's usually how I handle it And 
and then these I'm gonna do them a little bit smaller because they're for the kids so that's how you can divide your tray divide the cake how it fits your needs guys one of the other things that I want to say is that if you're planning this cake for a birthday or a big celebration practice it before you make it the first time because that second time you make it it's gonna come out even better and that way you can just be like hey look at I just made a cake yesterday hi <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and start adding my uh, strawberries. Yeah, I, I sliced them with a knife this time because these were too big. So I didn't use that little apparatus I used last time. If you guys are curious about that video, I'm going to link it at the end in the description area. And um, there's a lot of information on this video and on that one. And hopefully I'm able to answer uh, most of your questions on this video. Or towards the end. I'm gonna pick these smaller ones for the smaller pieces. Look at that little tiny cute one. I'm gonna act like I'm dieting. You guys know I don't believe in diets. <laughs> Everything in moderation. I don't consider uh, I don't consider things diets, I consider them lifestyles, right? Because if you have to adapt your food to different things, it's your lifestyle. Okay? And I wanted to be super cool for the family so I did the little it's gonna be very very good <laughs> so you can just pile them on however you like because I always feel like when you get a big piece of cake and you hardly have any of the strawberry all of it together is what really makes it and something like that that way if anybody wants extra you have a little extra plate of berries because I'm like that myself. I'm like, oh, I should have put more strawberries or cut a few extra on the side. And then you just put them wherever they're going to look pretty. I think that looks good. What do you guys think? Yeah, we're set. Let's put these to the side. That first piece, guys, it's always a little difficult to get out if you're using this kind of tray. But I'm going to go for it. a delicious cake the more you let this set in the refrigerator the firmer it's gonna get and the more absorbent the syrup is gonna get into every little nook and cranny of this cake so enough talking let's eat oh yeah if you guys are new to the channel please take the time to subscribe if you like this recipe give me a thumbs up and if you haven't clicked that bell for notifications I'm gonna need you to do that too <laughs> also if you guys are making my recipes Please send me a picture or a video on uh, my Twitter account or my Instagram and I love sharing them here at the end with you guys. So let's give this a taste. I want to thank you so much for uh, joining our club and also for taking the time to make these recipes. If you made the previous Tres Leches cake um, and you decide to make this one, I would love to hear your feedback. So please come back and let us know in the comments. And even if it's your first time trying it, I would love to hear what you think. Make sure you stick around towards the end because I'm going to be adding a lot of frequently asked questions that might help you as you get through the process of making your Tres Leches cake. So thank you guys so much for watching, sharing, loving me because I love you guys back and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye! Adios!